Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. If you are new to the channel, a big warm welcome. My name is Tristan Mortlock and this is Captain's Vlog. Now today I want to show you guys the hot water system on board and the hot water circulation system for the heating and the hot water coming out of the taps and showers and so on. So let's go down to the boiler room because creating all the servicing, replacing all the elements, testing the electrics and we'll get an update from him. So let's go and check it out. There he is. All right, Craig. Hey guys. How's it going? Yeah, I'm going all right. Doing a bit of maintenance. Found a couple of problems on the boilers. Uh, one element um, obviously burst, which is causing uh, the water heater breaker number two to uh, keep tripping out. Right. Um, so just pulling out the elements. As you can see, all the calcium build up on you. This is all calc from the fresh water. Yeah. Even with the water Even uh, filtration with the water system, softener, it's, still... it's still still quite bad. So how often do you need to service these elements or do you pull them out to inspect them? A good maintenance, you should pull them out maybe once every six months. Um, but yeah, these haven't, haven't been done in about a year or so, I guess, by the state of them. Yeah. Um, so well, the last time they were done, I know, was actually probably February, yeah, about this time last yeah, year, actually. Yeah. So once, had them all pulled out. Yeah, once every six months should suffice, should be okay. Okay. So, yeah. It's just... The problem with this build up now, you're not getting good heat transfer, so your water is going to take up a hell of a lot longer to heat up. Um, so if you clean these up nice and shiny, uh, make sure that the resistance on them is all good. Uh, uh, yeah, the water should heat up a lot quicker, um, therefore saving a bit of energy as well. The thermostats will trip them or kick them in and out, so they won't be on for as longer. So keeping the efficiency of the boat down, I guess. Yeah, and then, okay, cool. Fuck and then, sure, so, yeah. yeah, and then show us what they've done here with the two circulating pumps to explain why they've done it the way they've done it and what, what, what we're trying to achieve. So, when, when I originally joined the vessel, there was only one circulating pump, which is okay. The only problem with that is if you have guests on or you have your owner on board or anything like that, if you have a problem with one pump, that means you've got no hot water until you can get a new pump or sort it out. So what I got them to do is put in two circulating pumps with their own independent switch. So you can switch from pump one to pump two, um, which pretty much just means you've got redundancy. So if pump two fails, you can isolate it, close the valves off, remove it, and pump one will keep running, uh, supplying hot water to the rest of the boat. So you've got no da no downtime, so the, uh, the guests can still enjoy their their baths and showers, and yeah, make everybody happy. These pumps are used because they're circulating hot water around the boat constantly. Yeah. So whenever you turn the tap on, you've got immediate yeah. hot hot water. So these are running pretty much twenty four seven. Twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Right. And what kind of maintenance do you need to do on these kind of pumps? Um, not that much. Um, it would be good to open them and check them up. Um. Yeah, but I normally just let them run, I guess. Yeah. Um, until they really break or freak out. There. We've got one over here. Just give me a second, I'll grab it. Yeah. There we go. So we've got the bottom base, which is this part over here. Yeah. And inside you just have a impeller that spins around. Um, so as you can see, the cold water from the boat that's been recirculated comes in through here, through the pump, out through the discharge, then back through the boilers or the water heaters. And uh, yeah, it just keeps the, the water at an optimum temperature of, depending, 55, 60 degrees, whichever you prefer. Um, 
Yeah, it's just a little electric motor, 220. Okay. Are they, are these, do they have any components that are different because it's hot water? Or it doesn't? Um, not not, not to really. my knowledge. I mean, these are dedicated hot water circulating pumps, so the seals might be heat resistant, so I'm not really too sure. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, and then so these are the two boilers that provide hot water for the sinks and showers and taps and whatnot. And then the the tank above there, that's a closed unit, right? Yeah. So you want to explain what that so is? So that's a closed system. So that runs off your AC system. So in summer, you obviously isolate the sim the system with the valves, um, switch off the breaker, so the pump's not running up there. It's just a normal centrifugal pump. It's pretty much acts the same as. The pumps that I've just shown you, um, they just circulate the hot water around. And what this does is this allows you in winter, you can switch off your AC chillers and condensers and everything, and you can heat this up, and this pushes hot water through the chilled system or through the chilled water loop. So, you know, those nice cold days, you can just turn on your, your cabin um, air conditioning, and you should have nice hot air coming through just to heat up the boat and make it a bit more comfortable for everybody. And you were saying to me earlier, there's no actual fresh water going through, it's a closed... No, that's closed loop, so that's got all your glycol in it, um, your antifreeze, should I say. Yeah. Um, yeah so, so you're not going to have issues with calcium buildup like you're having with these boilers no, now? No, you shouldn't. Um, it's good practice to change your glycol every so often. Um, you get a special tool called a refractometer, which um, measures, measures the density of the glycol, so once it drops past a certain specification it's best to remove everything flush it out and then put new glycol in there um, it's normal boiler routine maintenance again maybe once a year check the elements just make sure um yeah none have burst or popped there's no shorting out with the um, electricity or anything like that so, so yeah yeah okay so once you're done here with two boilers so you should we should be set for the season and in theory they should be operational until the next winter yeah yeah well, fingers crossed huh yeah hopefully if um uh, yeah, the engineer that joins or if I stay um, wants to do a bit of service and maintenance maybe change them out every six months Once, give yeah. them a bit of a um, polish up and clean Yeah, um, but yeah should be good getting new insulation taking all the old insulation off over here so I've ordered some nice um, plastic coated insulation so once that's on it'll actually heat um, keep the heat um, in the pipes yeah. retain the heat a lot more so you don't lose it through radiation um, yeah. yeah should be good to Great. go for the season Great, thank you, Craig. Oh, pleasure, uh, for those of you who don't know, Craig's actually leaving us uh, at the end of this. At the end of this month, we've got a new engineer joining, um, so we're get, he's going to be sorely missed. He's done a great job this winter. We're really, ha really happy with the result, and he's done all his work, and now he's leaving to the yeah. to the next boat and start all over again. Unfortunately, yeah, you, know, yeah. you get it where you want it to be, and then you up and hand it off to somebody else. Yeah, but one of those things. Yeah. All about experience, I guess. Yeah, exactly. All right, Craig. Well, thank you for the explanation. Thanks for your time. Cheers, guys. Cheers. So guys, as you can see uh, with these vlogs, I'm giving you uh, an insight of what goes on um, behind the scenes because a very common question I get asked is what do the crew do in the winter? So these vessels, you know, you can't just tie them up and then leave them. It's constant maintenance and constant upkeep. As you can see, the engineer is constantly busy, the deck team are constantly busy, I'm also constantly busy and between all of us, we need to maintain this vessel to a very very high standard you know so as you've seen from the last vlog since we started in the shipyard it's given you a bit of um, well, quite a big insight really of what goes on behind the scenes and what we're doing in the winter months and a lot of it's also preventative so what we want to do is minimize potential issues uh, in the summer months when we have our charter guests on board because what we don't want to do is for an incident to happen, say a, a major breakdown or a failure of the air conditioning or whatever it might be uh, that will affect the, the, the trip on board for one of our guests. So we want to minimize that. And you do that by doing preventive maintenance, planned maintenance, and just testing all the systems, checking everything, doing all the correct inspections, getting the, all the surveys done, and just constantly staying on top of it, you know. Um, so, you know, when you, when you do, when you do buy a yacht of this of this caliber, you can't think you're using and put aside this amount of money, you're gonna buy the yacht and that's it. It is an upkeep every single year. The value of the yacht will normally depreciate, but the upkeep will stay the same. So I would always estimate around 10% of the value of the boat from new 
every year to run the boat. So in other words, let's say the boat costs you 10 million euros, you should expect to, to spend around 1 million euros a year to maintain the boat for crew, upkeep, shipyards, to keep it to a very high standard. That can be reduced, but again, if you're reducing the cost, you're gonna reduce the standard of the boat and you, have, you run the risk of running into problems during the summer as well. So it's always best to spend the extra money and to keep it at a very high level. Plus with the history of the boat, when you have a planned maintenance, when you come to sell the boat, it's gonna sell a lot quicker as well. So that's the end of the vlog for today, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, uh, please do click that like button. Please do subscribe. If you have any questions or any queries or you don't agree with anything that Craig has said uh, about the boilers, uh, please let me know in the comments box below. Do check out the social media. I've got a Facebook group called Super Yacht Captain and Instagram is Super Yacht Captain One. So do check those out as well. And I look forward to seeing you next video. Thank you.